All right, welcome to the Stitch Method Masterclass. Listen, for a long time in my life, probably two decades, I was a very frustrated guitar player. I was limited by a few pentatonic boxes. Uh, I really didn't know like how to make them work or how to make them connect efficiently. I used to watch all of my favorite guitar players just rip through the guitar neck up and down, and it really kind of like cast a shadow of like self-doubt on myself whether or not I had the ability to become a really good guitar player. As I continued my journey and started teaching, I had many, many revelations, and I want to share them with you today. If you feel like you know your pentatonic boxes, but something's not really clicking, this is the masterclass for you. Today, we're going to be talking about linear pentatonics and chord tone soloing. We're going to take the frustration of playing in boxes and kind of you know trying to move them or staying there and turn them into colorful, confident navigation on the guitar neck. So if you're interested in that, come check out this masterclass. It's about an hour long. It's a companion to my caged arpeggio masterclass that I made about a year ago, so you can check that out too. But that being said, thank you so much for being here. Let's do this masterclass together. All right, the fun fact that you have to get into your head is that a chord and a pentatonic are so closely related. In my Caged Primer playlist, lessons seven and eight go over this idea really thoroughly, and we're gonna be bringing a lot of the ideas from those lessons in here, but really listen to this equation. If you, if you are a betting person, right, three out of five ain't bad for your odds, and even four out of five ain't bad for your odds. And why am I saying that? Well, when you look at a chord, a major chord, the intervals of a major chord, let's say, are a one, a three, and a five. And the intervals of a major pentatonic are a one, two, three, five, and six. The one, three, five create a scaffolding or a constellation that if you can see your chord, then it acts as a, you know, a navigational tool to see the pentatonic that is wrapped around it. The pentatonic just has two extra notes. Again, really look at that. One, three, and five is the chord, but one, two, three, five, and six is the pentatonic. So if you can see the chord really easily, then the pentatonic comes with it. In minor chords, a minor chord is a one, a flat three, and a five. A one, a flat three, and a five. And the, uh, sorry, yes, and the pentatonic is a one, flat three, a uh, five, well, listen to me, one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, and one. And what's even more important, one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one, is the fact that a, any any minor chord, any minor chord can be soloed on top of, of or thought of as an, a minor seventh, excuse me, a minor seventh chord. One, flat three, four, five, flat seven. So a minor chord is a one, flat three, five, and a flat seven, there's my dog, and a minor pentatonic is a one, flat three, four, five, flat seven. And so four out of the five notes of the chord that you can visualize are, are oh, sorry, are visualized are part of the pentatonic in minor. So it's a very strong, like, bedding stance that you say, okay, if I can see the chord, I can fly right into my pentatonic. And we're gonna use that gambling mindset to show you how easy it is to kind of go all the way up and down the neck when we are playing. So let's get right down to it. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna talk, we're gonna take the easiest chord shape there is, all right? We're gonna take the regular E-shaped chord. Now, well, this E-shaped chord always goes with the E-shaped pentatonic. So here it is, and it would look like this. All right, you can see that on this pentatonic, you have uh, from the E string, five, seven, four, seven, four, seven, four, six, five, seven, five, seven. Right now, we are picturing this chord. But what you're gonna do now is just picture the, the chord on the thin strings here. And you want to say, okay, here are my chord tones. And that goes with this pentatonic. And stop there. Or if you want to bring this guy in. So if somebody said we're jamming on an A chord, what you want to do first is you want to visualize the A chord and see it. You want to see it with your eyes. Boom. Five, five, six. You want to come in and land on one of those chord tones. Anyone is fine, all right? We'll talk about some specifics soon. And then once you have your bearing of the chord tone, then you can play this pentatonic. 
just on these strings. Now, if you stay right here, yes, you're gonna be in a box, but let me show you something else. Let's take the next chord shape. The E shape connects to the D shape here, and this is a D shaped um, A chord. And uh, the pentatonic box that would go with this, you probably know as a form three, but also it's a D shaped pentatonic. It's inside this chord. Here is the one, the five, the one, there's a three here. And these guys, the ones, threes, and fives, are inside of, of a pentatonic. Well, which pentatonic? This guy here. Now remember, this is all lesson seven and eight in my Cage Primer playlist. So now I can see the chord, or I can see the chord fully. I play it a little differently because of my short, stubby hands. But I can see this chord, and I can see this chord here. Really? There it is there. Now, more importantly, I can also see the pentatonic that goes with my D-shaped chord all the way, just on, actually not all the way, just on the E, B, and G strings. Now if I look here, I can see my A chord. I can see my A chord here. I can also now see the pentatonic here and the pentatonic here. But when I go to play something in A, I'm gonna visualize the chord first, and then I'm going to slide into a chord tone, and then I'm going to think about that pentatonic maybe move to visualize my next chord tone. I'm in the chord and now think about that next pentatonic. So now I have these two pentatonics. And it's quite addictive to think this freely. If you can see the chord, you see a majority of the pentatonic. Let me put on an A major backing track loop really quickly, and let's see, and I'll show you one more space, and we'll go over things. And one more space to do this, and I'll show you how I solo over it. And if you do it right, you don't even need to look at the guitar neck. All right, I have an A backing track loaded up, and now what I'm gonna do is press play on my looper, and I'm gonna solo using those pentatonics that I saw. I have my E shape chord, I have my D shape chord, I can see the linear connection, not the boxes. I'm not going like this. I'm seeing it on these three strings. And you can almost, if you, if you know where you are, you can stare up at the ceiling and you can solo without looking. Very simple, but just watch and see how it looks like I'm playing linearly. Here we go. Okay. Now, free flowing, not looking, because I can visualize where I am. If you have a chord here, well, this is the pentatonic, and I know when I slide here, well, okay, well, I can see the chord that I slid into, and I can bring the pentatonic with me. Let's, let me show you one more box. Let me turn off my distortion. Again, box is going to be connected. We're going to take away the thick strings, and it's going to leave us just these linear pentatonics. And so now I have uh, that E-shaped pentatonic connects to my D-shaped pentatonic. And now that connects to my C-shaped pentatonic. Here's my C-shaped A chord, All right? And now we have the pentatonic, which would be this. Right there, 9, 11, 10, 12, 9, 12. It's just the thin half of it. Now, you look at the chord, okay? If, you know, you're looking just at the chord that you have on the, uh, the G, B, and E string, which is, if you're an arpeggio master and you've seen my arpeggio master class, maybe that guy. But now, if you can see the chord, then you can really see the pentatonic. So now I'm going to put on that backing track again. I'm going to use my E shape, my D shape, my C shape. I'm going to be staring up into the sky, but as I stare up in the sky, I can kind of see that map underneath my fingers quite easily. I'm not jumping and getting lost. I'm kind of moving to there, okay? Let's see how it goes. <laughs>
now, again, is it the most amazing solo in the world? No, but I will get there. Um, I can see and I can feel as I move those chords. And as soon as you connect those chords, those pentatonics come with it. All right. So this is just showing you, you know, how to think about it. And so what we're going to do next is we're going to lay out the entire map in this like caged sequence, but on the three strings. And we're going to practice them in different keys. Speaking of practicing, come check out a bunch of practice sessions. Uh, link below on Patreon if you like this stuff and you really want to retain it. The smartest uh, person I knew, uh, no, he's still alive, my dad, uh, said, you know, insight is not cure. And so if you want to like really practice this stuff and have it down, check out the Patreon sessions. So stay tuned. This was just a brief example of like how it works. If you're intrigued by this, the next, uh, you know, chapter is for you. All right. All right, so I gave you a brief kind of like example of the DNA of how it works and all the things we need to know. So we're gonna start at the actual very beginning of creating a like Loctite mental picture or mental map of the guitar neck that is like inescapable. And what I'm referring to is the chord and pentatonic relationship. We wanna study this first. We wanna know it really well. If, if this is as far as you get in the master class, this will take you so far in your guitar journey alone uh, that it's really worth spending the time. So what we're going to do here is we're, we're going to discover the, the close, super close, tight relationship between chords and pentatonics. Now, coming up on the screen is a graphic. And when you look at this, it's like one of the most intimidating things to look at. It's the thin three strings with the pentatonics built into it. Uh, when, when I look at this, you know, without any sort of navigational tool, it looks like just a map of the stars and no constellations. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill in uh, where those chords are in this graphic so that we have these constellations to navigate by because inside every pentatonic is a major and a minor chord. And so let's show you that relationship and we're going to make this graphic seamlessly, uh, seamlessly work for you is what I meant to say. All right, here we go. First, let's take a look at major chords. Now, everything I'm saying here is really broken down well in lessons seven and eight in my caged primer playlist, but this will be like the quick and dirty version. All right, so let's take a look at first at the C shape chord. Now, the C shaped chord is a C shaped chord because of where the intervals land from the root note. Here is the root note, the one, all right? So this is the one. Here's my three, here's my five, here's my one, Here's my three. If we were to map out the entire uh, arpeggio that you can play in this box uh, by themselves, not together, the ones that we play together are the chord shape. But if we look at all those arpeggios, we have uh, the three, the five, the one, the three, the five, the one, the three, and five. Now look at that arpeggio shape. Now when you look at the pentatonic shape, it's like, holy smokes, like they're pretty much the same. Here we have, starting from the root, now we have a one, and you can see the two, three, five, six, one, two, three, five. All of these uh, notes, all these chord tones are in that pentatonic, and you can really see, like I said in the beginning, that if you're a betting man, hitting any one of these chord tones brings you right into the pentatonic. So really quickly, the C shape chord is one, three, five, one, three. Those are the intervals you're playing from the root note. The full arpeggio, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five. And then the pentatonic, three, five, six. Yeah, sorry, three, five, six, one, two, three, five, six, one, two, three, five. Now, studying this alone can take, you know, days, weeks, and just understanding it. I totally get it. But I want to show you that. Look at that. It is undeniable that there is a chord built into the pentatonic. Let's get to our next shape, the A shape. All right, the next shape we're going to take a look at very quickly is the A-shaped chord. It looks like this. All right, this is the root note here. So I'm actually playing a D chord, but it's in the A shape. And now the chord intervals are 1, 5, 1, 3, we very rarely play this in the chord. We usually bar here and mute it. I discussed that in the later sections when I show you how to put it all together. But those are our intervals. Now let's look at the complete arpeggio in that box. We have five, one, three, five, one, three, five. Very cool. And if you look at that, it's like, wow, now look at the pentatonic. They're so closely related. We have five, six, one, 
two, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. The chord is built right inside. Take some time just to learn this. Of course, the practice sessions are going to have the maps for you and everything, but this section really is to show you that they are one and the same. All right, really, really, really are. And the better you can see your chords, the better you can see your constellations, and the better you can navigate. Let's get to the G shape. I'm gonna play a G shape here. The reason I'm moving them around is just to show you, you can play them anywhere and the intervals never change. So the G shape chord from the thick root note is one, three, five, one, three, five, one. You can play the thin shape like this, you can play this, but those are our chord tones. And now we have the pentatonic, right? We have uh, six, one, two, three, five, six, one, two, three, five, six, one. Again, like this is the third one I'm showing you. I'm going to show you all of them. Your mind shouldn't be exploding at this point. You should be expecting to see the fact that those chord tones are built right into the pentatonic scale. In the major pentatonic, the notes that are not in the chord are the two and the six, all right? And that, that becomes important later on when we make a little bit of music with the uh, pentatonics. Let's move forward, let's go to the E shape. I'll play the E shape back here in the fifth fret. This is an A chord. The intervals of the physical chord are one, five, one, three, five, and one. Now let's take a look at the uh, all of the arpeggios you can play in this box area. It's one, three, five, one, three, five, one. I like to sometimes hit the three up here, but that's not in our box, so don't worry about it. One, three, five, one, three, five, one. And you guessed it, let's take a look at that pentatonic and let's find where those twos and sixes are right now. So we have the one, two, three, five, six, one, two, three, five, six, one, two. I can't stress this enough. The Patreon practice sessions are gonna have you going up and down these types of scales, picking out certain intervals so that you can see them no matter what. The last major chord shape that we're gonna talk about is the D-shaped chord. Now, everyone who watches my channel knows that this, this chord shape, it's not my foe, but I very rarely play it uh, you know, the correct way, which is like this. My fingers just don't move that quickly towards this, so I kind of do an abbreviated version. And so let's take a look at the chord tones, like the real way. It's one, five, one, three. All right, so there's the intervals. Now let's take a look at that pentatonic. Now, the, actually, I lied to you, let's take a look at all of the arpeggios. All right, we have the one, uh, five, one, three, but now all of the arpeggios are three, five, one, three, five, one, three. It's a headache of an arpeggio. It is my least favorite, but nonetheless, when I'm soloing, you know, I use it, but it's just so scattered. Three, five, one, three, five, one, three. Now look at the pentatonic, all right? Two, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three. There it is, all right? It's there. You're gonna see as we progress and connect them all in the next section for major that um, I really don't think of it that hardly. I kind of make it very, very easy to kind of navigate that one, all right? Now, that was all the major. Now. Before we go to the minor, let's take a look at that graphic again, all right? Here's that intimidating graphic, but now if we can see the thin end of the chords, right? Boom, like look at this. Now we can see the C shape, the A shape piece, the G shape piece, the E and the D. And now it's like, oh, if I can see those chords, uh, then I can actually navigate on those three strings all the way through, up and down, and not worry about where I am. Now I have to say this, these pentatonic shapes, the big pentatonic shape, it does not change for major and minor. The shapes are exactly the same. That might confuse the heck out of you, so I'm gonna stop and say this. There's only five pentatonic boxes, and they connect like the five lions of Voltron. Boom, 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 okay? It's a dated reference. It was one of my favorite shows, all right? And no matter what, you're always gonna have like a form one pentatonic connected to a form two, connected to the form three, to the form four, and to the form five, no matter what. Every pentatonic has a major root note or a major chord built into it, and every pentatonic also has a minor chord or a minor root note built into it. The, the pentatonics share two chord shapes, and you'll see that. I don't want that to be too confusing, but that giant grand shape that we just did, 
isn't going to change at all underneath your fingertips. And that actually is a very comforting thing to think. What's going to change is where the chord tones are. So when we get to minor now, you'll see what I mean, but it'll be like nailed home even better as we progress to the master class. So let's take a look at the minors. The minor, we're going to start with the E minor shape, okay? The E minor shape chord, this guy right here, this is an A minor, but E minor shaped. The intervals of this chord are one, five, one, flat three, five, one. Now I do mention that you can play the minor seventh um, chords. We're not going to go over the minor seventh chord shapes because we're going to, we are going to talk about the flat seven. Don't worry, this will make sense. The flat seven when added to a minor chord makes it a minor seventh. Any minor chord can be fleshed out as a minor seventh. We're looking at the basic minor uh, compared to the pentatonic, but you'll be able to find that flat seven really easily, and you can consider it a chord tone if you want to, okay? So one, five, one, flat three, five, one. Let's look at all of the physical arpeggios that we can play instead of just what we can play at one time. One, flat three, five, one, flat three, five, one. Now let's find um, the pentatonic, all right? We have one, flat three, five, four, five, flat seven. Now this flat seven, of course, I just said, can be considered a chord tone, and the way you find it is it's always two frets down from the root. There's a flat seven, there's your one, a flat three, four, five, flat seven, and a one, and a flat three. Now you're telling me that the minor chord and the minor pentatonics are not closely related? No way. They are one in the same pretty much. The two notes that are not in the minor, uh, sorry, that are not in the chord that are in the pentatonic are the four and the flat seven, all right? And we'll be using those uh, to make some music in a little bit as well. All right, so hopefully I showed you that. Let's get down to the next chord shape, which would be a D minor shape. It is no surprise that the minor chord shapes are harder. They just are. There are some that are physically daunting, and there are some that, like, are easy, but the best thing is to, to at least study what they look like. If you can't play them, that's fine. But knowing what they look like, that's key. So let's take a look at the D minor arpeggio, or D minor shape chord. This is my root note. It's on an A, so this is an A minor chord. The intervals are one, five, one, and flat three. So let's take a look at all the arpeggios we can play. We have the flat three, the five, the one, the flat three, the five, the one, the flat three. This is the most brutal. Right now you're probably like, oh my gosh, and that's fine. Don't worry about it. You get the point, right? You get the point. Okay, every minor pentatonic has a minor chord inside of it. You can feel free to skip over that one. It's brutal. But when you look at the pentatonic, you have three, sorry, flat three, five, right? Sorry, f nope, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one, flat three, four. This is just a form two pentatonic, but, sorry, don't listen to me. But if you can see that minor chord right inside of it, beautiful. Let's get to the next shape. The D, the D major and D minor shapes are always like, ugh, for me, but, but nonetheless, you, you gotta know them, right? All right, so uh, we did the E, uh, D, and we're gonna go now to the C minor shape. This one is brutal. I know, you know, you're probably rolling your eyes and saying, okay, I get it, let's just scroll forward to the next chapter. You can do it, you know? Uh, and so the C minor shape, look at this bad boy. Root note is on the A string here. All right, this is an E minor chord. All right, now this 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 is a crazy, physically crazy chord. It, it just is. It's very rarely played. Sometimes we play just this piece. But again, just knowing them, like just knowing uh, what they look like is important. From the root, we have a one, a flat three, a five, and a one. All right, now let's take a look at the C minor shaped arpeggio. You have a five, one, flat three, five, one, flat three, five. One more time, five, one, flat three, five, one, flat three, five. So let's take a look at that pentatonic. It's actually quite easy. It's the form three pentatonic. You can see the intervals are right there. They, they really, really are. Uh, here is your four, five, flat seven, one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one, flat three, four, five. You can see that that C minor shape chord uh, goes right in the, into that form three. 
Again, the last two were brutal, but now it gets a little bit easier. Let's look at the A minor shape chord. I'll play an A minor shape chord here. This is an E, actually an E minor chord as well, root notes on the A string. The uh, intervals of this chord are one, five, one, flat three, five. All right, when you look at the physical, we have the five, one, flat three, five, one, flat three, five. And that's it, it's pretty simple, all right? And then look at that pentatonic, all right? Right on top of it. So we have five, flat seven, one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one, flat three, four, five, flat seven. I mean, it's undeniable at this point. All right, so let's keep on going. Sorry, I did that chop. Let's keep on going. Uh, we did the uh, E, we did the D, we did the C, we just did the A minor, and now last one, the G minor. Another brutal chord shape. I'll play it back here on the fifth fret. This is the G minor shape. The root note's really on the G string, but we bar from uh, the D string because this, this is the five, and then we kind of get the minor chord up here. All right, so this is actually a C minor chord. All right. All right, sorry, gotta play it cleanly, all right? And so if you look at the intervals, I have a five, I have the flat three, I have a five, and I have a one. If you look at all of those arpeggios, which is crazy, uh, we have the one, a flat three, a five, a one, a flat three, a five, and a one. That's not too crazy, it's just a, it actually feels good to play the arpeggios. Those are all the physical arpeggios, again, all the stuffs in my arpeggio masterclass that I mentioned. And now, if you look at the pentatonic, all right, we have the form five. Very, very simple. You can see those intervals. Flat seven, one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, and one. Now, I know that this section was kind of daunting. I totally get it. Sorry, I made a squeaky noise. I know you're probably rubbing your eyes and going, oh my God, Stitch, this is crazy. There's so much more to this masterclass. Is it this difficult? No, not at all, really. If you sit and study this stuff for about a day or two, you will be unstoppable, I promise. All right, so now let's take a look at that giant intimidating map that we saw. It hasn't changed shapes. It's the same exact map, but now the minor chords are highlighted. And so you can see that if you can see the minor chords, if you can really sit and see the minor chords as they lay, underneath your fingertips, the pentatonic comes with it, all right? And the Patreon practice sessions, I know I mentioned them a lot, are gonna have tons of those practice sessions so you can navigate by chords. Now what comes next is we're gonna look at the major soloing, then we'll look at minor soloing, then we'll look at um, making a little, more, a little bit more musical, excuse me, and then we'll you know come up with some combinations. So this is the part where it just introduces you to the whole like ingredient list. Now we're gonna start baking with the pentatonics and chord tones. And again, thank you so much for being here. Next chapter is how we actually do it. All right, like you should you should be familiar with major chords and minor chords of the cage system. If you are not, lessons one and two are pretty thorough in my cage primer playlist. There's no harm whatsoever in going and checking those out first, okay? You really need to know them. You need to know your five major shapes and your five minor shapes. And when I say know them, I mean be able to play them, but more importantly, at least be able to visualize them. Some of them are physically hard, but if you can see them, you're fine. So the first thing we're gonna do is the major sequence. Now, we're gonna do this in a couple of keys, right? Just so you can see it. We have our C shape, all right? It connects to our A shape, connects to our G shape, connects to our E shape, and connects to our D shape, and back to our C shape, all right? That's all one C chord. And so what you wanna be able to do is see the pentatonics on the strings, doot, 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 G, B, and E, all the way down. Again, lessons seven and eight in my Cage Primer playlist have those graphics and have a, a full lesson on that concept. So the C shape, we're gonna look for the pentatonic just on the high E string. That would be three, zero, three, one, two, zero. Three out of five of those notes are in the C chord. Really, even if you just played, which is the C chord on the uh, G, B, and E string, that's a great starting point. You can start there, get your bearings. Now, that connects to our A shape. 
This A shape goes with what we kind of know as a form five, but nonetheless the A shape pentatonic, which uh, from backwards, from thin to thick, is five, three, five, three, five, two. Remember that when you play, you know, this chord here, uh, the real chord, by the way, is, you know, three, five, 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 three, but we don't really bar that guy, we kind of mute it. So, you know, you can kind of think of the A shape chord like this. Those are the chord tones inside the pentatonic. So if I'm playing a C, and I can visualize the next chord tone, because here I am on that third fret, and it's like, well, it connects to the fifth fret, you know, A shape, and as soon as I do this, I'm on the chord tone, I can visualize it, and it brings the pentatonic with me. Right, and so we're here. Now, the A shape, C connects to A, and A connects to G. You should not be unfamiliar with this, this shape here. The G shape goes with our form one pentatonic. There it is. Now, if you look at the shape, you can play it like this, or you can play it like this. Any which way, they're both like C chords or G shape chords that are usable. And those are our chord tones. And really, just these two are not chord tones, they are pentatonic tones, but they help sew the arpeggios together without sounding like arpeggios. So we have this. I see. So I have this into my A shape, into my G shape. I have this massive piece right now of soloing machine. We're not going to stop here. This connects to our E shaped chord. This E shaped uh, chord is still a C. And this goes with the form 2 pentatonic, but its pentatonic on the thin strings are 8, 10, 8, 10, 9, 7. This little chunk right here is the chord tone chunk that represents a three out of five notes of the pentatonic. So entering in on any one of those is fine. This E shape connects to the D shape. Now the D shape, you can kind of see it like this, just like this little piece. All right, that's 12, uh, 13, 12. And you can play, the, the, excuse me, the pentatonic that goes with it on the thin is 10, 12, 13, 12, 12, 9. Sorry, 10, sorry, 12, 10, 13, 10, 12, 9, okay? It's a stitch method video, what do you expect? All right, so now look at this giant linear pentatonic. Well, actually, let me show you the boxes, then I'll play in linear fashion. So we have the C shape on the thin strings. The E, sorry, the A shape on the thin strings. The G shape on the thin string. The E shape on the thin string and the um, D shape. These are all pentatonics brought to you by the chord that sits inside them. So let me just load up a C major back track and I'll show you the linear power of it. Stay right here. Okay, so I have my C major back and track. And now, here is the magician type reality of the guitar and the linear pentatonics. I really haven't stepped out of my caged box kind of mindset. It really helps connect things. But when you're watching, you're gonna see like a lot of linear movement. You're not gonna see these boxes and then a box jump. You're gonna see. You know, really quick movement up and down the neck. But I'm visually my C chord, my A shape chord, my G shape chord, my E shape chord, my D shape chord, visualizing the pentatonics that come with it, realizing where I am and then I'm able to move down or up, depending. Again, we have a lot more to do. This is just the structure of it. So let's see if we can get this here. Again, I know it doesn't sound amazing just yet, and we have things to do, but you can see the navigation is there. Like, the navigation is right there for major. So you want to practice this for major. And again, 
huge practice sessions linked below. All right, again, we're gonna use this for soloing in a key. We have some things to do to make it sound really good, and we're gonna use this for soloing over a moving chord progression. So uh, practice this stuff however you want to. The next chapter, we're gonna talk about minors. I know it's moving quickly, but there's a lot of prerequisites that are there for you. And uh, with that being said, let's get to the minor. All right, minor chords are no different. Every minor chord has three slash four notes out of the five in a pentatonic. I have a video um, linked below about the minor seventh chords hidden inside of a pentatonic in case you're unfamiliar with that. Really great video that goes along with what we're doing here. This is just a big lesson on putting all these lessons together. And so let's just take a look at the minors. All right, so let's start with the easiest minor shape to C, which is the E minor shaped chord. Okay, this is an A minor, it's on the fifth fret, the E minor shape. So this E minor shape uh, chord always gets what we call the form one, or now you can call it your E minor shaped chord, or pentatonic, excuse me. Okay, and that's the truth. Now you might say, hey, Ian, wasn't that the G-shaped pentatonic? Yes, every pentatonic shape, which has five boxes, has both a major and a minor chord buried inside of it, and it also has a major root and a minor root buried inside of it. And so that's why it looks so familiar. All right, and so now we have this guy for the E minor shaped A minor chord, but now we just need the notes on the thin string. Now the chord itself is really cool. I mean, if you play it like this, you know, here's, here's the piece. So if you, if you can picture this as an A minor, any one of these notes. Interestingly enough, you can also play, an, uh, um, excuse me, a minor seventh with your pinky here. That, and so you have. And look at this, out of these notes. All right, this is the, this is the, uh, excuse me, this is the uh, minor third, this is the five, this is the flat seven, this is the one, and here's a minor third here. The only one that wasn't in the chord is this four here in the pentatonic. It's such a safe play to come in on any note you can see in a minor chord and then play with the pentatonic. So the, the E minor shape gets this guy. All right, this connects here to the D minor shape. Now, if you don't know your minor shape chords and you're going, oh my God, this is too much, then you really want to watch, um, let's see, lesson number two, and I think it's lesson number eight uh, of the Cage Primer playlist that are gonna help you, but you definitely wanna get those down. This is the D minor shape, A minor chord, and the pentatonic it goes with, and this is inside of the form two, but now it's known to you as the D minor shape chord. And now, so now we have. We have this kind of linear, small linear box that's connected here. And the D minor shape connects to the C minor shape. Now, this one is brutal for a lot of people. Look at that, it's a brutal chord. But if you can see it, you're fine. If you can see that the C minor shape for an A minor is 10, 9, 10, 12, then you're good to go. These notes here um, bring with it the form three pentatonic. Always, anytime I play this chord, this pentatonic goes with it. And now the notes on the thin strings are 9, 12, 10, 13, 10, 12. Alright, so we have. And then I have this chord here. And this guy here. Alright, this C minor shape connects via this root note here to the A minor shape. And this A minor shape brings with it uh, the form four, or now the A minor shape pentatonic. We just are concerned with the notes uh, on the thin three string. And here are those chord tones. All right, instead of getting a pie and crunched, we're gonna go back to our form one, and we're gonna find the last one, the form five. The form five goes with the G minor shape chord, another brutal, brutal chord shape, and nonetheless, you know, you wanna be able to see it, and this goes with the form five. Like this. But now, we just want the thin. And so if you look, you can see those chord shapes. I know minor is harder for some reason than for some people, but you know, to spend a day learning your minor chord shapes in the cage system, you'll be fine. And so my complete A minor linear pentatonic, really, really, 
That's so funny. And then, and there it is, okay? And so we have a very large footprint now that goes this way. And when you play it and somebody's watching you, they don't see you thinking about the chords. They just see you. You know, just playing linearly up and down. And you now understand how to see it. So let me get an A minor back and track going in a couple seconds, and then we'll talk about moving chords, which is really fun. All right, stay tuned. All right, so now I have a jam loaded up. I'm gonna put an A minor pentatonic on top of it, and I'm just gonna move linearly. Again, I'm gonna focus on getting to a chord tone that I can see once I have that chord tone, I can kind of see the pentatonic around it. Why? Because I practiced it, and I watched this video. And so, <laughs> and so let me just show you what it looks like. It looks, like linear pentatonics, but you, you know and I know that we're kind of keeping tabs, kind of connecting them very easily with chord shapes. All right, let's see what it sounds like. There it is, just moving around, all right? Navigating, we're just talking about navigating it. And so again, many, many practice sessions linked below uh, in my Patreon, uh, talk about how to do this in different keys and get the navigation, some extra tips for you. Uh, then what comes next is about making this a little bit more musical now, all right? The musicality behind it is a little bit different than just navigating through it. There's some really cool things to do. And so we'll talk about that. Hopefully you're enjoying this and seeing this, that this can help, you know, move you up and down the neck and not just box to box to box, where you have to kind of like put energy into moving. This is very, very like, frictionless. All right, see you in the next chapter. All right, in this chapter, we're just going to talk about both major and minor pentatonics. Uh, you know, if you watch this channel, you know I'm a big fan of the band Fish and specifically Trey Anastasio's style of soloing. And I have a video, which would be popping up here, about his improvisational mindset over a song called Wedge. And um, I, even though I taught this, we're just going to talk about it. If it is a chord tone, we tend to not bend it that much, right? The musicality behind everything now is about taking the navigational tools and just creating some music. And so, because we don't really bend a chord tone, because when a chord tone lines up with a chord tone, it's like perfect, and that's what we want. And so you want to see the chord tone, and you want to see the pentatonic, and you can mess with the pentatonic notes. You can bend them, you can slide with them. And, you know, so what you want to try doing, and I'll do it right now, is I'll show you that, you know, in the minor pentatonic, there are some notes that you can bend. Uh, the four bent to a five. Great, okay, so knowing where your four is is important. And so, you know, in a pentatonic, you have a one, flat three, four. This is, oh sorry, this is my, I should do that, right? This is my A minor pentatonic. This is the one, this is comes from the G minor shape. This is what we're just playing. One, flat three, four. You know, bending this guy up. Oh, don't watch me ever again. You know, is, is a good move. Also, even though the flat seven in minor is considered a chord tone, it likes to be bent up to a one. Here it is, well, here it is again, but I'm gonna do it in the, in the form one, right? Here's my one, flat three, four, five, flat seven. So the four bent to a five is great, and the seven, uh, sorry, the flat seven bent to a one is a really good move. Uh, another thing that we bend in minorville is that minor third, now you probably said, Ian, you don't bend with the chord tone, but there's something called, um, I forgot what it's called, is it blues curve? I can't remember, but anyway, when you take the minor third, right here, one, blues curl, there it is. And you kind of put a little bit of twang on it. Not a lot. All right, so the musicality in any pentatonic consists of the root note, which we love, right? The minor third that can be curled a little bit. The four bent to the five, or even a flat five. All right, the five, we kind of just like play it, right? Or we can get to there from the four. The, the minor seven, or excuse me, the flat seven, up to a one. So if you can find these guys, and this takes a little bit of extra, you know, em uh, emphasis here, but you know, if it's a chord tone, when you, when you when you jump into a chord tone, you know, you're like, oh well, that's not, 
that's not the bendable stuff per se. Maybe the minor third is, if you can find it, but hey, this ain't a chord tone, so I can mess with it. And so the idea is, if you, you know, navigate by chords and still have your pentatonics, sometimes, you know, you don't have to think of the intervals so much. If it's a chord tone, you kind of stay still, but if it's not a chord tone, you can kind of bend with it and play with it a little bit. So I still have the A minor backing track loaded up. I'll turn on some distortion and I'll show you what I mean. I'll do it here in the form one. Look out for, or, or the E minor shaped pentatonic. Uh, I have my root here, all right? This is my flat seven, five, here's my four. I'm gonna bend that a lot. So you can see it happening, let's see. So right there, very simply, you can see you can move those guys without sounding too terrible. And so, you know, you want to try doing that in every box of the pentatonic, okay? So that E minor shape connects to my D minor shape. Look for your chord intervals, my root, here's my five, here's my, my flat three. All right, so here's my, if this is my flat three, this is my four. If this is my root note, this is my flat seven. And so you can kind of put a little bit more stuff in there, not just arpeggios and sliding around to pentatonics, you can put more stuff in. Let's see if we can get that down. Nonetheless, you can hear you're now, you're not just playing the notes, you're now manipulating them. So you want to see, am I on a chord tone? Am I not on a chord tone? What is this? This takes a little bit more time to do, but again, my practice sessions below are going to help. And if you want to just sit and see, well, am I playing chord tone? Am I not? If it's not a chord tone, you know, Stitch says I can kind of mess with it mess with it, all right? The next thing we'll do, we'll do the same thing in major. This is a shorter chapter, but the musicality now depends on how well you can navigate. See your chords, see your pentatonic, now mess with your pentatonic. A lot more to come. I hope you're enjoying this. Uh, that's pretty much it. Next chapter. All right. All right, now we're on our um, major section. Uh, it has a little bit of a different twist to it, but I'm gonna show you. We have a backing track in E. And what's really cool about this is the, the intervals work a little bit differently, but nonetheless, we have the same concept. If it's a chord tone, we kind of leave it. If it's a, uh, a non-chord tone or a pentatonic note, we can kind of mess with it. So what I'm gonna show you right now is, uh, I'm gonna pick this E here, this G-shaped E chord, up on the 12th fret, and we find our pentatonic. Try to see if we can find our chord tones in it. Right there it is. Uh, and now what are they? We have a root, you have your third, your fifth, and your root. Here's my major second. The rule of thumb is major seconds love to be bent up to the major third. And so we have a one, two, three, five, six. Now sixes aren't really uh, bendable uh, as much, but what they love to do is get slid into the one. So we have these conversations with the major pentatonic. Major always sounds happy. And really the chord tones are very stable. That major second. And that six. Oh, really? And that six. Likes to get slid up to the one. All right, and so I'm gonna use this G shape. I'm gonna use this E shape here. Let's take a look at that. Here's my chord tones. This is my major third, my five, my one. Here's that major second. Here's that six. It likes to come home to the one. And we'll use this A-shaped E chord and the pentatonic on the three strings. All right, this is my six here. It likes to come home to a one. All right, here's my uh, three. All right, so this means my this is my major second. This can be bent up. Here's my five. And again, this is a six that's shared by this guy and this guy, so. 
All right, so I'll load up an E major backing track, or I have an E major backing track loaded. I'll turn on my distortion and I'll try and follow those rules. Navigating by thinking about the chords, grabbing a chord tone, moving linearly in the pentatonic, and then trying to dress it up with a little bit of conversation. Here we go. <laughs> Very, very simple, but nonetheless, the intervals are doing their job. So now, I don't know how far we are into this class, but we have a map. We have a map of cage chords of both major and minor. We have a map of the overlaying pentatonics that always go with those shapes. That's important. We have a map of just the three strings for each one. And now we have a map that we have to kind of conquer of like, well, is it a chord tone or is it just a pentatonic note? And now we discuss that in the minorville, um, the uh, four likes to be bent to a five, the flat seven likes to be bent to a one. In majorville, the two likes to be bent up to a major third and that's six, you can kind of sit on and come back home. All right, what comes next? And take your time, you know, I, I don't know if you're watching this one whole shot, just watch what you want and come back to it and watch what you want. What comes next is about moving moving our chords, all right? And having chord progressions or having chord progressions that have multiple chords. And now another way to solo is to play the pentatonic for just that chord while that chord is being played. And when the chord changes, well, you move your pentatonic. So sit still, make sure you have all this stuff down before we get to this next part, because now it's like on high alert. And so take your time, like I said, thank you so much for being here. Next chapter is about moving the chords, rock and roll. All right, before we get into moving the chords, you should have um, a level of like joy and for lack of a better term, like addictiveness to this type of soloing. Being able to visualize the chord and the pentatonic and play and understand where you are is really you know, confidence building, and I want you to be there. If you're not there yet, you know, there's a, there's a lot of um, videos I link below that are kind of prerequisites, like I said. They might help kind of, you know, uh, turn that light bulb on. But where we are now is about taking this linear concept of being able to um, find the chords and play with uh, these linear uh, pentatonics and now moving them. And what I mean by that is before what I was talking about was if something was in the key of E, just find an E major chord, and you have your E major pentatonics. If something was in the key of A, then it's, you know, you find an A major chord and you play your A major pentatonics, and it should sound pretty, pretty good, all right? And so, sorry, all oh, my wind chimes are blowing. <laughs> all right, so, so the idea here is what happens if the chords are moving, and this is what it's all about. So the song that we're going to use as this backing track is a song that kind of like, changed my life really when I heard it and I didn't understand it and then I figured it out. Uh, it's a song by Fish. It's called Waves. You don't have to listen to it. Um, I'm not trying to sell you on the band. It's just this is, you know, what happened to me. I'm trying to share the experience with you. And the jam is very, very simple. It's A. if I can. And so it's A for like, I think, A beats and then D for A beats. It's nothing too crazy. And it's like, well, what key is this in? And I don't want to make you throw up, but it's like, well, is it in A? Is it a 1 to a 4? Is it A to D? Or is it in D? Is it 5 to a 1? You know, is it A to D? And when you think like that, you go, I don't know. And you can try soloing in the key of A because it's your first chord. You can try soloing in D and see if it works out. Or you can say, hey, you know what? When the A chord is being played, I'm going to play the A linear pentatonics. And when the D chord is being played, I'm going to play the D linear pentatonics. So let me show you that really quickly. All right, this will be one of our practice sessions linked below. For A, let's see if I can find those chords. I have my A here, I have my A here, I have my A here. So I'm going to just work on those for you. It's the E shape connected to the D shape, connected to the C shape. I've done this a million times. I know that my pentatonic is this for the uh, E shape, I know my pentatonic is this. D shape, I know my pentatonic is this. 
for the C shape. And again, I'm visualizing the chords. My mind is on the E shape. My mind goes to that uh, D shape. My mind goes to that C shape. It sees my chord tones I can land in. Once I get there, I can easily see the pentatonic. All right? And it looks like that I'm playing with this motion here, but really I can kind of like see the chords. I'm just intertwining them. For the D, I'm going to play, let's see, uh, the D chord here, C shape, okay, D chord, and so my pentatonic is here. I can see the chord tones. My D chord is here. I can see the pentatonic here. That's my A shape. All right. Uh, and then my next D chord is here. It's my G shape. So I'm going to turn on some distortion, and I'm going to play uh, an A pentatonic with the chord tones when the A chord is being played. When it moves to the D, I'll move to the D uh, major pentatonic. And this type of playing gives you a lot of fun. Number one, you know, you might end up in a place where you go, oh my gosh, I like this is the same note for the next chord. You can stay on it, cool. Or, oh my gosh, the next note is right here. Uh, you know, I can find it there, boom. And you can add a lot more color because now we're changing scales. So it's gonna sound a little bit more colorful. So let's see if we can get that done. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so you can see that I'm playing with each chord tone, uh, each chord, really mesmerizing stuff, really cool to practice to, all right? It's that simple. Again, a lot of practice sessions on uh, Patreon. And so let's just do the same exact thing, same backing track, let's just pick it up here. All right, so let me turn my distortion off. So here we have our A chord here on the, on the C shape. All right, and so I have my pentatonic for A. I have my chord tones. I have an A here, I have my pentatonic, I have my A here, and I have my pentatonic. D, I have my pentatonic, this is the E shape. Um, D, I have my pentatonic, oh really? And then I have my D chord here, I have my pentatonic. Distortion comes on, I press play, and now I'm gonna find my A first, let's just start here, and here we go. This can be combined with all of your other knowledge that you know, the boxes and everything you've seen on Stitch Method. That this is just an awesome way to connect. What comes next is just another chord progression um, with a minor chord in it, so you can see it work, and then some final, like you know, words of wisdom, and then this class is over. But I'm telling you, you know, to learn how to move 
linearly is really freeing and enjoying, enjoying, and you can really enjoy yourself um, and be confident that you know the guitar neck and use it in multiple ways to bring a lot of color and movement. You don't have to solo just like this, but you can solo in a form one, then use this to kind of move around, then get to a next place. I have some uh, videos coming out about that later on, but this is just about the movement. All right, so the next chapter is our final like chapter to see it work and then some words of wisdom. Stay tuned. All right, don't mind the airplane noise above here. Uh, but this one moves a little bit faster. I'm doing it on purpose, not to disorient you, but just to show you that as you move, that airplane is very loud. I should just stop. All right, that airplane was just too loud. So I'm doing this on purpose. It's a faster backing track. It's E minor to D. And the reason I'm doing it is not to force you into like hyperdrive. It's just to show you that you can do it once you get really good at it. Hopefully I can do it. Uh, it's gonna be an E minor to a D. And it moves fast. It's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And so now the linear pentatonics for every chord. E minor, okay. E minor chord here, I have the E minor shape pentatonic. Uh, e minor chord shape here. I have the minor pentatonic. E minor chord shape here. Oh really? I have the E minor pentatonic here. <laughs> Don't ever listen to me. E minor chord here. E minor pentatonic. E minor chord shape here. E minor pentatonic. All right, and so on. Here's the E minor. And for D, D chord, D, D major pentatonic. D chord, D major pentatonic. D chord, D major pentatonic. Um, D chord, D major pentatonic. So I'll throw in some distortion and you know, I'm, I'm, I want to shout out loud as to what chord I'm on, but I know that me shouting and trying to play and stay focused and not screw up isn't the best combination, but let's go for it. D. E. D. E. D. E. D. E. D. E minor. D. E minor. D. E minor. D. E There it is, a little sloppy, but nonetheless, you can see it in, in action, all right? And it looks really cool, I don't know how it sounds right there. <laughs> Again, me saying things out loud, not a very good <laughs> combination, excuse me. All right, and so you can see it work, all right? Again, I hate to hawk it, but in Patreon, we're gonna have tons of sessions for you to practice with. They'll all be linked below. No need to go look through the Patreon, just the right below. And so we'll end with some words of wisdom. Number one, go slow. Number two, make sure that every section makes sense in this class before you go to the next one. This is up forever. There's no rush here. You're not in competition with anyone, all right? This is about you becoming the best guitar player you can become, and so take your time. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, and I'll turn my distortion off, it's just a little cheap trick that you can throw. That cheap trick, it's actually really good. It's why I said that. Um, anytime you're playing major, a major pentatonic, let's, let's just take... Um, uh, yeah, okay, let's just take the C shape. It's easier to see here. Um, this is the major third here. So one, two, and here's my major third. Um, you know, throwing in that four, you always can do it. So if you know where your major thirds are, throwing in, you know, let's see, there's A, here's a one, like one major third. You can kind of get that hexatonic feel in there. All right, and so this class, I assume, is like, what, probably an hour and change. And it's designed just to show you the mental mindset of how to play linearly um, with the least amount of friction, I think, all right? And instead of like trying to think of like scales and the intervals in them, I believe in the guiding light of following your chords and then getting everything from your chord navigation. With that being said, thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you, um, you know, are better because of it. Please let me know if you have any questions below in the comment section. Thank you so much for being here. I'll stop talking. Rock and roll. Bye-bye.